My name is Doug. And I'm Kelly. And we are the lead pastors at McKee's Rocks Assembly of God. We're so excited that you've chosen to join us online for our stream today. We hope and pray it's a great and meaningful time for you as you get to be a part of our online community. Our church is here to serve the neighborhood to, and to be neighbors. So as you enjoy online community today, we hope and pray you can join us in person one day. service for McKee's Rocks Assembly. We hope that you're enjoying your New Year's holiday with your family, with your friends, as you're hanging out, eating breakfast, chilling in your PJs, whatever that looks like. So we invite you to join us in worship this morning. Thank you. 
Pastor over at McKee's Rocks Assembly. Hi, and I'm Kelly, the Pastor Doug's wife and kid pastor, youth, whatever, extraordinaire worship person. That's me. I like that. Good. I like it too. Um, we just want to welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning on this last day of December, getting ready to hightail it into that, that uh, you know, first of the, of the year and the brand new year of 2024. It's it's here. Yeah. It went by. 2023 is gone. Goodness. It's crazy. And that's okay. Say. Yes. It's time to move forward. <laughs> Very much so move forward. With that said, we just have a few announcements just to get you started throughout your week. I want to let everybody know that our Wednesday night Bible study will resume on Wednesday, this Wednesday uh, on the 3rd at 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. online. So get back online, get in your chairs and whatever and put your headphones on and get ready for um, an exciting time of Bible study. Also coming up the week after that is our week of prayer. So starting on Sunday the 7th uh, through um, the 13th, which would be that Saturday, we're going to be in person Sunday night and Wednesday night at the church and then online for a prayer focus on Monday and Thursday. Um, we also want you to check the website out. Um, and our social medias every day for our daily focus of prayer. So every day we're going to have a different focus of prayer. Um, so that way you know what to be praying for. Um, and also when you're on socials, if you have got prayer requests, please like send them to us. Like we want to be praying for you uh, and your families and whatever other circumstances throughout this week. So make sure that you um, do that. And um, that way we're making sure that everybody is starting off the year right, being uplifted in prayer. That's it. It's going to be a great time. 
We're going to gather together and worship. Uh, so again, that's Sunday, January 7th in person at 6 p.m. at the church. Wednesday, January, what would that be? Sunday's the 7th, Monday's the 8th, Tuesday the 9th. The 10th. The 10th. I could just have added 7. You could have. To what you said on Wednesday. On January 10th in person at 6.30 p.m. So we'll gather for about half an hour and it'll be a great time of worship. With that said, uh, it, we're going to enter our giving moment. So uh, since you're all joining us online today, we want to encourage you to uh, head to our website where you can give, um, uh, there's a give link there that you can click and walk through the whole process. If you do feel more comfortable giving in person, uh, feel free to hold on to your tithes and offerings until next week. Um, if you're looking to get that in before the end of the year, because uh, we recognize that may have tax implications too, feel free, uh, give us a shout out on here. We'll figure out a way to make sure that that can happen. So. Other than that, let's enter back into worship, and uh, yeah, let's do it. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, he's been my fourth man in the fire time. Lord of the Spirit, washed in His blood, and what He did for me on Calvary's more than enough. I trust in God.
we enter your word today, Lord, we pray that you'll speak to us powerfully. God, let us hear your voice. Lord, change us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello and happy new year. Uh, it is so exciting to be with you uh, online this morning as we're all uh, spending time with our families, as we're all kind of meeting as a church asynchronously this morning, as we're all in our natural habitat. You can see my beautiful office with my Godzilla picture and my gigantic tree that was only supposed to ever get this big and then just kept growing and growing. So, um, but it's great to see you. We're going to close out this year by closing out our expectation series as we walk through this Christmas season. You're probably thinking Christmas is over. How can we continue an Advent series? Well, the reality is there's one Sunday left. I'm not going to start something new. Uh, right at the end of the year, that would be silly of me because that's ultimately what the new year is about. And so we're going to talk about this idea of promise today um, from Philippians chapter 3, because every new year brings the hope of some sort of new beginning. This is why we set up things like New Year's resolutions and, and kind of take this big break before the year resets. And we really celebrate when January 1st hits. You know, you may be the kind of person who stays up to midnight and uh, waits for the ball to drop in uh, in New York City and you watch it on, on TV and um, or you're, you know hanging out with friends and family, and you're just all excited for what that new year brings. Um, you may be the kind of person who thinks, how in the world are we already at this point again where this new year is changing? Uh, you know, five minutes ago, it was mid-April, and we're all getting ready for summer. And then, you know, you blinked, and summer was over, and we're back to school, and you blinked again, and it was Christmas. And now here we are entering into another new year. So you may be looking at this past year and thinking, oh, wow, how did I do with any of my New Year's resolutions? Did I do all this really well or did I just need to cross things out and kind of start over again? The good thing about some of these is that there's a way around most of it. Like if you've gained weight this past year and you want to lose weight, listen, just aim to lose the weight that you've gained this past year. It's a net loss on your end and that is a win um get fit stand up to the boss you know we see that this person clearly crossed that out and now is looking for a new job because it looks like that did not go the way they expected um so best of luck to them same with their relationship status be nicer to my wife now we see it's ex-wife and now we see it's try to uh we see how things change um you know throughout the years and uh and so maybe you're entering this year kind of thinking, oh, how am I going to hit any of my goals? What am I really looking to accomplish? Who am I looking to be in this up and coming year? Or maybe you're just kind of coming into this new year, super low energy, much like our friend Elsa here. So my sister got this Christmas ornament a few years ago and it's been sitting in the attic and let's listen to it. Where's the switch for this? Oh, it's a button. Okay, ready? Alright, this is going to be demonic. That was not creepy. So we can see Elsa was having a couple of issues there. We get it. We've all kind of been running with our check engine lights on, haven't we? It feels like that. Uh, we look at uh, Elsa who's running out of batteries. Hey, we've been there. Maybe you're there now and you're looking forward to this new year as kind of a grand reset. And that's kind of honestly why we moved online only for today. We all need a day to rest. We need a day to take a break, and I hope that you're getting that break today. So as we talk through our scriptures today, our big idea is our call to walk boldly into the new year. We're going to take a look at a portion of scripture from Philippians chapter 3. 
where Paul, who was the apostle, who uh, experienced almost nonstop threats and nonstop work and nonstop movement of the gospel in his life, uh, really walked us through what it looks like to walk boldly into new uh, areas of our lives, into new time frames of our lives. Because as many of us enter into this new year, you know, we're so programmed to think new year, the clock resets. And that's a really important thing for us. But oftentimes we walk into a new year holding on to what happened into the past, looking at kind of the future and just saying, is this even possible? It feels very much like the old Greek myth of Sisyphus, who was constantly pushing the rock up the hill. And as his curse, he was made to push it up the hill. But every time he would get to a certain point, the rock would fall all the way back down to the bottom. And so he'd have to go back down to the bottom and start pushing the rock back up the hill. And maybe it feels like that way in your life where another year, really, am I ready for this? Can I even do this? Is this the kind of thing I even want to face? Our call today is to walk boldly into new year. And so as we read, we're going to read from Philippians chapter three, we're going to read verses 12 through 14 says this, not that I've already reached the goal or I'm already perfect, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I have also been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead. I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the promise that a new year holds, Lord, as it kind of operates as a reset in our life. Um, Lord, we pray today that you would speak to us from your word, that we would hear from you about how you want to challenge us in this coming new year. God, to focus on you, to make you our whole entire center, just like Paul did. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So it's very important, first and foremost, before we go any further on, to talk a little bit about what Paul was going through. Because Paul wasn't just kind of giving a motivational speech of saying, yeah, you can do it. Set your goals. You know, you hear a lot of that nowadays. And uh, that is really not what we're going to be about. Uh, But Paul did really talk about this idea of saying, I don't look at my past and let it hold me back. I look forward to what needs to happen so that I can achieve my goal and getting to know the person of Christ Jesus. As he was walking through the book of Philippians, he was writing from prison. So he was not enjoying himself very much. Um, He would have uh, experienced everything that prison life kind of holds for him, uh, which we all know is not that great. Uh, We know from um, stories uh, and other pieces of scripture that he probably had just enough money to kind of rent himself Uh, like a private cell. So he wasn't like in a hole somewhere. Um, He was able to have visitors, but still he was locked away for a period of two years. And in that time, a lot of people started coming out and saying, if God really loved Paul, Paul would not be in jail for this because we're out here and we're free. We can do whatever we want. And so Paul, in a couple of the epistles, a couple of the letters that he wrote, had to really justify even his existence as an apostle. You know, if you look at places like 1 Corinthians and Galatians, where he's just like, listen, I came to tell you the truth. I came to talk about Jesus. The reality is all the trouble comes with that. And so he talks a lot about this uh, throughout the letters. In Philippians especially, he kind of pulls back a little bit because he loved the people of Philippians. Not that he didn't love people everywhere, but you get that sense from this letter of this grand joy that he found in the Philippians. And the Philippians were a people who, um, you know, prayed for him and supported him in everything that he was doing in his ministry. And so he still needed to kind of pull back a little bit and just say, listen, I recognize who I am. You know, and he lists all of his qualifications. You know, I was a Pharisee of Pharisees, and I'm super well educated, and I'm a Roman citizen, and I'm this and that, and I saw Christ Jesus face to face. You know, like, well, maybe that last one, he doesn't, he pulls later, but he's listing off all of his qualifications, and he's saying, but all of that is dung 
garbage. Not garbage. He actually uses a word uh, that I can't say on here because there are children watching. Um, but it basically equivocates to human feces. It's basically worthless if I can't achieve the goal of getting to know Christ Jesus. He had one thing in mind. Knowing the power, the presence, the person of Christ Jesus. And that was his whole entire thing. So when we look at this, we're not just looking at another motivational speech. Paul wasn't standing up there like Tony Robbins saying, jump on your trampoline for seven minutes every day. Not that there's anything wrong with that per se. He was saying, no, set your eyes on the goal and the person of Christ Jesus. And so what does that look like for a person like Paul? The first thing he said is that he acknowledges the past. He says, not that I've already reached the goal or I'm already perfect. He recognizes that he hasn't gotten there. He's been on a journey there. Uh, he says, I don't consider myself to take hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind. And what he's talking about is not necessarily saying, oh, I, I forget the past. The reality is, is that we're all a product of our past. Every single last one of us, we're a product of our culture. We bring that with us on our relationship with Christ, into our journey with Christ, into our relationships with others, including the people of God. Uh, Paul wasn't just saying, I forget the past. It's more a sense of, I don't let it hold me back. His past was something he had, but his past didn't have him. It didn't hold the control over his life so much to the extent that he allowed it to kind of slow him down. In fact, we see a number of times that Paul was sharing the story of what God had done in his life and how God had gotten a hold of him. Man, read the book of Acts, uh, you know, especially like the later chapters, like 20 through 28, where he gets before kings uh, and emperors and just says, listen, here's exactly what happened. I was walking through a trail. You know, it sounds very like, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Well, this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. I'd like to take a minute and just sit right there. How Jesus met me on a trail. I can't rhyme in real time. I'm not really. Oh, I just did it. I just did it. I'm not a rapper or anything, but you get the sense. He was sitting there and he got to tell his story because the story was a part of him. In fact, our pasts are a part of who we are. The problem becomes when we allow that past to become a burden to us. Listen, we carry heavy pasts. We carry things that have happened to us and lots of trauma and lots of terrible things that may have happened to us. Terrible things we have done, you know, like we hold on to like those little, uh, you know, hopefully those little embarrassing moments, but sometimes those far more detrimental moments of words that we've said to people that we've kind of harmed that relationship and we let that hold us back from maybe repairing that relationship or things that we've done at, at work or to family or to people that we've said, oh, I think about it every day. Great example of this for me. We had a, a, a situation uh, in the company I run this year where uh, somebody called a project that we worked our tails off we worked so hard on it. And I remember hearing on our very first call, this is an utter disappointment. And I'm like, how can this be an utter disappointment? Like, this is something we've worked so hard on. It's got some revolutionary, not revolutionary, but close. It felt revolutionary to me. Revolutionary kind of stuff that's going to feel so good. Going to be such a good experience for your users. And those words, utter disappointment, are the kind of things that it's taken me months to not wake up every day and hear in my head. That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying we can't let our past become a burden to us. We can acknowledge it and say, this happened. Just like Paul did. He said, I forget what's behind. I don't let it hold me back. It, it, it's there. I acknowledge it. I see it. But it's not going to hold me back from the ultimate prize of me uh, getting to that heavenly call in Christ Jesus, the highest calling a person can have, the presence, the power, the person of Christ Jesus. So I want to encourage you today, you know, 
as we go through the new year, we kind of took like a joking look at our, our over the past year. But the reality is, is that this year probably for you had lots of ups and lots of downs. And it's good to look at each of those in gratitude to God and just say, thank you. This helped shape me for who I am today. I may not have liked it in the, in the, in the, or like in the real time. I may not have liked it in the moment, but it is what it is. I see it and it helps shape my journey for who I can be today and looking beyond. And that really comes to our next point here is that we not only acknowledge the past, but we embrace the present is that Paul took a look and said, I recognize I have not reached the goal. What a great thing to be able to say. I have not reached the goal. You know, there's such a point as we're looking at at our past, as we're looking at what's happened over the past year, that it's so easy to look at like our list of New Year's resolutions and say, no, I have not gotten it. I've not gotten there. Start with that. Because ultimately, our goals are one part of a goal, right? Like uh, any goals that we're really setting, even as we're looking at our relationship with Christ, as we're looking with our relationship with others, um, anything that we're looking at is a stepping stone. Because what happens if you get there? There's always more to go. There's always more to grow. You know, up until the moment that we pass away, we meet Jesus face to face, there's always more steps for us to take in order to continue growing. Whether you are seven years old or you are 70 years old and beyond, there is more for you to do to grow. And that's what Paul really talked about. Paul mentions this one phrase in here where he says, I've ar- not that I've already reached the goal or I'm already perfect but I make every effort. I make every effort to take hold of it, to take hold of the goal of knowing Christ Jesus. You know, I I had a friend of mine. I I still have a friend of mine. (laughs) A friend of mine once told me, uh, I went to him and, and uh, you know, he's a, a coach. He was working at a time for an international missions agency and I remember sitting there and I'm just like, listen, God just feels far away. God just feels far away. And I feel like I'm doing everything I need to in order to grow my walk with Christ. I'm doing everything I need to do to really experience, you know, God. And it just feels like it's all either falling on deaf ears, which that puts the blame on God. And I don't really want to do that. Or it's something I've done that I'm just like not holding, you know, putting out there. And, you know, we talked about it. He's just like, well, you're putting in the effort. You're making every effort there. And so God has never moved. And so just because it doesn't feel close, just because he doesn't feel close to you right now, doesn't mean he's not. And it was like one of those eye-opening moments for me where even in my walk with Christ, I was focusing too hard on expectations that really uh, were outside of the scope of the present moment because God is near. Christ is near to me. He calls me brother. He calls me friend. I call him Lord. I call him Savior. He's right here with me in this present moment. And I'm making every effort. And so it's not for any sort of moment where I'm saying, okay, Christ is far because I'm, I'm not taking that effort. But no, I put in the work because I want to grow my walk with Christ. And because of that, I experience Christ. And I experience him in different ways. And uh, that was really kind of an eye-opening moment for me because the reality is, is we can't always control the outcome. Here's a great example. There's this cube on the screen. It bounces around all day, and sometimes it looks like it's heading right into the corner of the screen, and at the last minute, it hits a wall and bounces away. We have a lot of colored paper here. Why, oh, why do we keep printing this on white? No, come on! Yeah, I know. 
I know, it's bland. Pam claims that she saw it one day when she was alone in the conference room. Okay. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it, and it was amazing. Who said I didn't see it? Did Jim say that I didn't see it? I saw it. It's never gonna happen. Dude, Dude here's what I was you gotta believe. Maybe we could have some sort of riddle. Wait for it. Like something that you have to look for. Sort of a where's Waldo? Oh! <laughs> All right, all right, let's quit while we're ahead. That was so awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> Some days I am just on fire. Why don't I say? <laughs> the thing I love about this is how distracted they are. They're making zero effort to actually be involved in the meeting. And I just absolutely adore that, first of all, because meetings for meetings sake should never happen. But what I love about this is just how engaged they are with one collective goal. They're so focused on the present of just watching the DVD cube go back and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and it's not anything that they can control. All they're doing is putting in the effort. So I want to encourage you and all of us to do the same today is to really think about, look at the effort you're doing. You know, it may not be worthwhile to say, to, to measure exactly the goal you're trying to hit. Oftentimes it's way more, it's way better to measure the effort you put in to achieve that. Because the reality is, is sometimes you can't really say like, I'm going to make sure that I hit this goal because there are things outside of your control that you can't hit. But if you say, I'm going to put in X effort every day to put 1%. So if you're, you know, then you can guarantee you're going to make progress. Because effort denotes progress. You very well may not hit the exact goal that you're looking to do, but progress leads, or progress, excuse me, progress comes from effort that we put in. And so not only are we looking at embracing the present, but we're also looking to aim for the future. If we look at what Paul said, that he doesn't let the, the past hold him back, but he looks toward that goal that he has to have something that he is aiming for. And that goal is the person of Christ Jesus. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection, he goes to say later in that letter. That's ultimately our call, is not just to let the past hold us back, but to acknowledge it and say, I recognize that you've got me to this point. And to really embrace the present, to say, what can I do today to help me aim for what I want in the future. What does that effort look like? And then getting a vision for what you actually want your future to be and what Christ wants your future to be and the calling for him. Ultimately, what Paul is calling uh, is saying here is that his ultimate calling, as is ours, is to Christ. It's to know Christ and to dig into the person of Christ. And so what does that effort look like for me today? It was ensuring that, hey, I'm getting into the word of God, that I'm seeking God in prayer, that I'm practicing some spiritual disciplines. That's one of the things I'm really excited about this coming year is we're going to do like a whole series of messages on spiritual disciplines and talk about prayer and fasting and service and generosity. Um, it's going to be a great time, but it's practicing those kind of things. Are you going to do it perfectly every time? No. And that's why Paul says, I haven't attained it. I'm not perfect. I'm just a guy who's got this goal in mind, and that goal is the person of Christ Jesus. And so as you're thinking through this coming year, taking a look and saying, God, what is it that you want my life to look like? What is it that you have shaped me to be and to do? And then saying, what does that look like to actually make some plans toward that this year? You know, where we're, you know, I kind of mentioned early on that, hey, this is not going to be a motivational speech kind of thing. Um, but the reality is, is that Paul was very future oriented. He was always looking at his present circumstance in light of the goal he was trying to accomplish. 
for Paul, so much of that goal was looking at the um, the unreached peoples that were around him, the places where the gospel had yet to go that he wasn't a part of, that he hasn't been there. He wasn't even sure if the gospel had actually gotten there itself. And so he said, it, you could read this in like a number of letters, you know, the end of Philippians where he's saying, listen, the giving that you're giving is helping provide for the mission that I'm on. If you look at the book of Romans, the entirety of, um, uh, or the last half of 15 and the entirety of chapter 16 are all saying, listen, here's what I'm looking at. I am going to uh, this place. I'm going to this place. I'm going to this place because the gospel hasn't gotten the air and that's who I am shaped to be. And then Acts 16, where he's thanking donor after donor and saying, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for making this mission possible. You know, we look at the book of Acts where uh, in um, the uh, uh, like 18 or 19, I forget exactly where, but where Paul is, is saying, listen, I'm going to appeal to Caesar. He's putting himself on the line, you know, where he recognizes he's in a bad spot. He's in trouble for, um, for sharing the gospel. And he could have said nothing, but if he said nothing, he would have stayed where he was. But instead he said, I appeal to Caesar, which means that he has to go on a month long journey at the Roman government's expense to meet the Roman emperors uh, and the Roman leaders to say, hey, here's why I got in trouble. This guy named Jesus. And he had this whole plan in his mind. So much so that that one of the other people um, in that chapter says, he would have been fine if he just hadn't appealed to Caesar. So why did he do it? He did it because he had a plan and he knew at that point he could do it on the government's dime. Smart move. <laughs> you know, it's very similar. Like 2024 is... Uh, is uh, an Olympic year. So we're going to get another summer Olympics. Um, you think about all these athletes who have been training. They don't just get called to the Olympics like you and I picking up the phone and saying, hello. Oh yeah, I'll be right there. And you know, Oh, Hey, I just got to learn to wrestle or I've got to learn to, to, uh, bobsled, you know, a bobsled's a winter sport. This is the summer Olympics. So I uh, name it, just throw in another summer Olympic sport. Um, but you think about these athletes have been training all of their life because they have a goal. And for them, the goal is that gold medal. For them, it's saying, I want to achieve peak pinnacle physical fitness. And that means that today, the effort I put in needs to lead toward that goal. And so they recognize too, hey, some of that's outside of their control. They could get injured. You know, somebody else could be better than them. You know, at, at some point, like our bodies have limitations no matter how hard we work them. Maybe I hit those. But it's at least aiming for the future. And so as we look at this coming year, I want to encourage you as you're, as you're sitting down with your family today, Think about what is it that you want to say, I reached for this goal in 2024. By the power of Christ, I felt like he was leading me this way. And I made every effort to head that direction. You know, really take time and pray and say, God, what is it that you want me to be doing? Who is it that you want to, uh, or, or how is it that you are shaping me, that I can lean into that shaping? You know, there is zero wrong with saying, I want to improve on my career, or I want to, you know, help this project, that kind of thing. Give it to Christ and let him take that, let him birth that inside of you. And as he gives more and more fuel to that fire, take every step that you possibly can to get there. Because as we walk through and as we really we walk into and then walk through 2024, it's about recognizing that God has put us here for a reason. It's looking at ourselves honestly and saying, God, you have shaped me to be this person. And because you've shaped me to be this person, 
I want to lean into that. Take everything I am. Take my past. I'm not going to let it hold me back anymore. Take my present, every moment of this day, and help me to put in the effort to accomplish what it is you have for my future. And just give it into surrender to Christ. Because we recognize that as we do this, we work not alone, but we work with Christ. And if you look around you now, you've got people who love you and care for you. There are people who are joining the stream right now who love and care for you that you're that are going to be walking similar journeys to you and are walking with you in this because we don't walk alone. Paul was saying all of this to people who loved him dearly and were walking this journey with him. Maybe not in prison where he was at, but they were with him in spirit. So let me pray for us. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you that you call us to seek you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength. I thank you that you give us passions, desires, skills, Lord, that we were meant to use for your glory and for the good of the world around us. So Lord, as we say goodbye uh, gratefully to 2023, God, as we say uh, goodbye to the joys we've experienced and hold them dear in our heart, as we say goodbye to the challenges and the lessons that we've taken with us, Lord, we thank you that we can step into a new year recognizing you have called us and gifted us to follow you with everything that you've given us. God, give us courage to not let the past hold us back anymore. God, to acknowledge it with gratitude and say thank you, and then to take those lessons with us into this new year. God, give us the courage to embrace uh, the need for us to put in effort. God, no matter how small, Lord, I pray that you'll help us to walk with you in that. Lord, and I pray that you would paint a picture of our future for us. God, that you would help us to recognize and help us to see who you're shaping us to be and who you're calling us to be and to lean into that, recognizing you're a good God who is out for our good, for the good of the world, and most of all, who is out for your glory. Lord, help us to glorify you with all of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. We wish you a great new year and uh, a great time with family and friends uh, as you step into 2024 together. So join us for one last worship song.
Father, we thank you for this time today. Thank you for the opportunity to worship you. God, though we're not all in the same room today, Lord, I thank you that we're united as your family, as your people today. Father, so wherever we are worshiping today, Lord, I pray you bless us. Lord, we come with gratitude as we look to the end of this year and the start of a new one. God, be with us. Help us to glorify you in everything we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray that you have a great new year, that you have lots of fun and enjoyment with your family and friends as you celebrate, say goodbye to 2023, and say hello to 2024. Have a good one. pastors at McKee's Rocks Assembly of God. We're so excited that you've chosen to join us online for our stream today. We hope and pray it's a great and meaningful time for you as you get to be a part of our online community. Our church is here to serve the neighborhood to, and to be neighbors. So as you enjoy online community today, we hope and pray you can join us in person one day. Mm -hmm.